On September 4th, the Grand Prix in Zandvoort, the Netherlands will take place. Circuit Zandvoort is known as an old-school circuit with fast, undulating and challenging curves shaped by the natural dunes. Not many people know this, but the racetrack owes its existence to the German occupiers. The racetrack was built after 1945 with the rubble of the hotels that had been destroyed during the war. With a track length of 4.3 kilometers, it is one of the shorter circuits on the Formula One calendar. There are not many circuits where drivers race past the race fans so often. The short pit lane makes a three-stop strategy possible. A spectacle is guaranteed. So what can we expect for the upcoming race? And what has happened in the past? Watch the video to find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Max Verstappen Formula One channel, the best place for your dose of trending news and updates regarding Formula One. Before we proceed, hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell for more exciting updates. Between 1952 and 1985, the circuit was intermittently the location of the Grand Prix Formula One of the Netherlands. In 2020, for the first time in 35 years, a Grand Prix was to be organized again at the circuit. However, due to the corona pandemic, this race was cancelled and postponed until 2021. The Dutch Grand Prix is known as a race in which driver's skills are put to the test, especially Zandvoort's most famous turn, the Tarzan Curve. At the end of the straight, offers an opportunity for overtaking maneuvers. It's a long, slow right turn at the end of the start and finish. Will everyone get through this after the start without any damage? The start will be very important because there are not many overtaking opportunities on the circuit. The circuit is unique for several reasons. First, there's no other circuit so close to the sea, so you have great weather all year round. But what makes the circuit particularly wonderful is that it follows a natural path through the dunes. So much of the circuit is not contrived, but follows the shape of the landscape that gives it a kind of swing that you don't see on many other circuits. You go uphill, there are blind corners, it's fast. That makes it fantastic to drive on. So what is actually the reason that the Dutch GP disappeared from the calendar for so many years? In 1979, the Zandvoort Town Council decides that the circuit must be closed. The decision comes up against a lot of resistance from the local population since they believe that Formula One provides additional income. The municipality claims environmental pollution and traffic chaos as arguments against a Dutch GP. Despite money problems, racing continues until 1985. Then Formula One disappears due to the introduction of a noise pollution law. In addition, the circuit has debts and no money to maintain the track. Another question is, why did Formula One return to the Netherlands? Is it because of the popularity of Max Verstappen? 100% says Tom Coronel. Without Max, Formula One would never have returned to the Netherlands. But I also have to give the owners of the circuit a very big compliment because without their commitment, Formula One would not have come to Zandvoort. Last year, the Dutch circuit had two DRS zones, on the straight and between corners 12 and 13. So now the drag reduction system can also be used in the Kumho curve, where the rear wing is put in a different position and overtaking becomes easier. The current idea is to have the DRS zone start before the last corner so quite early, says Nicolas Tombazes, on behalf of the FIA. This should promote racing at Zandvoort, but we will keep all options open as the weekend progresses and listen to the team's feedback. Max also enjoys racing at Zandvoort. Especially turn 3 is very cool, he says. The Kumo curve is great. You can pick out many driving lines there. Another highlight of the track is the Scheivlock. That will be such an insane corner. The track first goes up and then down again. That goes enormously fast. It's very spectacular. Last year, Max Verstappen drove a perfect race at Zandvoort where he started first and also finished first. It was a great spectacle for the Orange Army who experienced a race in their own country with Max Verstappen racing there for the first time. But the circuit has a whole history of events to its name. A famous image from the Dutch Grand Prix is the lap that Gilles Villeneuve drove on three wheels in 1979. Furthermore, the Dutch Grand Prix is known for its persistent protests by environmentalists. Frequent winners include Jim Clark four times, Jackie Stewart three times, and Niki Lauda three times. In 1961, all 15 cars reached the finish line without a pit stop. In 1979, Derek Daly survives a crash at the Tarzan Curve, crashing his Tyrell into the top of the guardrail. 
The last official Formula One race at Circuit Zandvoort in the 20th century was held on August 25, 1985. The race, consisting of 297.6 kilometers, spread over 70 laps, was won by Niki Lauda. During the early 1970s, Pierre's Courage and Roger Williamson lost their lives while racing at Zandvoort. Both men died in crashes on parts of the circuit that no longer exist as part of the venue. The sections of track involved are now part of the golf course constructed over the demolished part of the circuit. Pierre's Courage had been running into the midfield after qualifying ninth for the race, when it believed his steering or front suspension failed at the fast tunnel east corner. The British driver ended up going straight on at the bend, traveling up the side of one of the sand dunes. The car disintegrated and caught fire, with the engine also separating from the chassis. The Tommaso chassis was unusual, in that magnesium had been used to help reduce its weight, with the magnesium burning ferociously, to the extent that nearby trees and bushes also caught fire. It's believed that Courage died on impact, or at least was knocked unconscious by the initial impact due to a wheel coming back and was hitting him. This is because the car was upright once the fire was extinguished and hadn't apparently trapped Courage in place. Courage was just 28 years old when he died, the heir to the throne of the Courage Brewing Company. Having entered Formula One in 1967, he had raced with BRM, Brabham and Lotus before switching to race for Frank Williams. Roger Williamson was a fresh-faced 25-year-old rookie in only his second Formula One event when he entered the 1973 Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort with the March team. On the eighth lap of the race, Williamson is suspected of suffering a tire failure that caused him to flip over and slide upside down, down the track at the Tunnel East section. Relatively unhurt by the initial accident, Williamson was trapped in place in the upside-down car as flames took hold of the march. Under-equipped track marshals were unable to get the car flipped over, with another driver, David Purley, stopping and crossing the track to help the marshals try to free him. Tragically, he was helpless to prevent Williamson from burning to death. Strapped in and upside down in the cockpit, despite grabbing fire extinguishers from the marshals and spraying the car, Perlay later revealed that Williamson had been alert and conscious, and pleaded with him to help him escape the burning car. However, by the time a fire engine had arrived and the flames were put out, Williamson had died. Tragically, Perlay's attempts to help had caused other drivers to think he was the driver of the burning car and didn't stop to help as a result. Despite Perlay's gestures and frantic signals for help as cars passed the site. Meanwhile, the race continued as usual because it was not clear that anyone was still in the burning car. It took a long time for the fire department to get there because they had to drive a whole lap around the track. It was only 20 meters backwards, but that was against the direction of the racing cars. And because the race continued, that was not possible. So the fire department arrived way too late. Perlay was later awarded the George Medal for bravery in attempting to save Williamson. Williamson's death led to fire-resistant clothing becoming mandatory for race marshals. Thankfully, the conditions are much better these days in terms of safety. The race in Zandvoort will once again be a big spectacle for the Orange fans this year. A lot of performances by well-known Dutch artists are planned, including Afrojack and Dub Vision. So are you looking forward to the upcoming race in Zandvoort? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.